And we start this morning in Detroit. Joining me now is the chief of police in the city of Detroit, Chief James White. Chief, it's great to see you. And thanks so much for coming in and sitting down and talking about everything that really has transpired in the last week or so. Um, I think when we, we see you out on, on scenes and on shooting scenes and you say enough is enough, this has to stop. And I think looking at last weekend, what happened in Greektown and along the Riverwalk um, in highly patrolled areas yes. already, what do you think has changed in the last year or so? Well, I think uh, a lot of displaced anger. Uh, I think impulse decision making. Uh, I say it often. Uh, I think people are willing to just uh, be reckless quickly uh, over matters that really uh, could resolve themselves very quickly. Uh, we resort to guns. There are a number of guns sold in this country at the onset of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Millions of guns across the country were sold at record numbers. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people have guns that shouldn't, and some of those guns end up uh, in the wrong hands. Some of those guns are stolen. Some uh, legal gun carrying folks are out there, and, and we have our, ourselves a, a major problem in our communities. Yeah, I mean, I think we talk about the escalation of, you know, you were on a scene just a couple of weeks ago. It was an argument between neighbors. Mm -hmm. This in you know, it was an, it was an argument about, uh, you know, standing in line. And, 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 and I think trying to figure out why it escalates that quickly is also a difficulty as well. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, again, you know, our job is to get, get out there and make our community safe. And we've got some challenges uh, with some decision making that folks are engaged in. And, you know, we're, we're, I've got the greatest police department in the country and they work very hard and they're good at what they do. But we are seeing some things that we've never seen before. We're seeing teenagers having access to weapons. We're seeing teenagers using weapons to resolve simple disputes. And, and certainly we're going to have to have our community support and help. Uh, to, to resolve some of these issues because they're very different challenges. Uh, as I indicated, you know, when you're when you're making impulse decisions uh, and you're not thinking about the outcome of those decisions, um, you're you're pretty much canceling out your life. Uh, for some relatively simple situations. Yeah, and when you're looking at strategy, strategy for policing downtown, strategy also for neighborhoods, because the bottom line is people want to be safe. You just unveiled a, a new 12-point plan, uh, that, you know, later this week and coming off of the, the last weekend. I want to go through point by point and have sure. you explain why some of those things that you believe will, will make a difference. And, you know, the first one is that increased police presence, that you're changing the, the midsummer police deployment. Oh, yeah. What does that mean, actually, for people? Yeah, so, you know, when we... Everything we do is informed by data and, and strategy, and we look at what happened in the past and, and what we want our outcomes to be. Uh, so we have a spring deployment, and that's usually it rolls out uh, first warm weekend in April. Uh, it's what we did last year. Uh, those numbers are significantly different than the numbers we roll out midsummer, uh, and it's based on crowd size. Uh, what we did not anticipate was the crowd size. This was midsummer crowds in early Wait, April, in April. I know. In April, uh, and and a lot more teenagers than we anticipated, and so we made a decision as a management team to immediately go to our midsummer deployment. So when you talk about the next thing was partnerships with community groups, and this is something community policing that, you know, for years in, in yeah. deploying that kind of um, working with community groups, what differences are you seeing right now and what other groups are you tapping into to be able to continue with this? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we talk about, you know, we, we're not going to arrest our way out of crime. I mean, it's never worked. Uh, but we, what we want to do is inform the community, want to educate our community. We're not going to apologize for making arrests of, of violent felons. We're not going to apologize for arresting folks who are legally carrying weapons. But we also know that education is important. And so what we're asking our Detroit 300s, our ceasefires, our Pastor Moles, uh, to Ferry Brents of the world is to help us out. And um, we've got great, great partnerships. Uh, Mr. Darrell Woods and others that are out there on the ground with us, pounding the pavement and talking to our kids and talking to our, our members of our community. Uh, we want them to be empowered to deliver our message as well. So we're passing out information on curfew and other things. Let's talk a little bit about trust, though, because I would think that you can need community engagement if they trust the police force. Where do you feel that you are right now with well, trust? Well, trust is something that you can lose in one bad right. uh, decision, right, or one, one day. It takes mm -hmm. a lifetime to, to get trust and a moment to lose trust. So we're always working on our trust with our community. We're always working with our community ambassadors. We're always making sure that we run a transparent police department. Uh, we're not going to always get it right. We're going to try. But if we don't get it right, we're transparent and upfront about that. And I think that those are the things that build trust in a community. We hear about curfews all the time. Mm -hmm. What is the change in curfew now that you're going to see? There's really no change. It's, it, I didn't implement a curfew. 
this is a citywide curfew that's been in effect, right? Uh, under the age of, or 15 and under, it's 10 p.m. Is it more 17. enforcement? It's then? going to be enforced. And, okay. and, and again, we think it's important to keep our kids safe. I mean, the parents should know where their children are. Uh, we're going to get our curfew violators off the street, uh, and then and we're going to deal with the parents. If the parents don't know and they're allowing their kids to violate curfew, and we'll ask the question uh, and, and find out what they knew. Maybe they were at work and they didn't know. It wouldn't be fair to issue them a curfew, or I'm sorry, a parental responsibility uh, ticket. But if they did know and allowed their kids to, to violate curfew, we will, in fact, be taking enforcement action against those parents as well. Yeah, and talking about the enforcement, really, um, of um, also looking at alcohol and noise violations. Absolutely. But you also talked about road closures. Um, and in the no yeah. parking zone. Talk to us about that and what with the differences we might see. Yeah, you're going to see a lot. Um, so what we've done, we just walked a footprint a little while ago, and one of the things we're going to do is we've got a lot of vehicles, and we, we see this from our eagle eye looking at the cameras, the same car circling seven, eight, nine times. Uh, that person's going to have to park, and they're going to have to park legally uh, to, to relieve some of that congestion in Greektown and some of the other more popular areas of the, the downtown footprint. Uh, that And also we see some problems problems that come from that we see uh, some 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 fights and things like that where mm. people are running the cars and, and getting weapons and and so we want to make sure that you can enjoy the downtown safely uh, park you can cycle a few times but seven eight nine times with your music blaring and, and revving your engine we don't we don't see the value in that so we want people to legally park uh, walk the footprint and have a good time safely. Another thing you're talking about the Eagle Eye hotline that businesses can call right. in and make sure that they can get real time help if they notice that something is percolating and happening right in their business as well. But I wanted to also talk about um, the video wall monitors that the people are going to be seeing too. Yeah, we, we're going to be rolling those out soon. Uh, we're hopeful that they'll be on the ground this weekend. We may uh, roll those out next weekend. There's something that we brought forward about three years ago uh, for the fireworks. And simply put, it's a video wall that you see yourself as you walk past the wall or get close to the wall. Uh, it just basically says, welcome to Greek Town or welcome to downtown or wherever we, we place it. Uh, at the time we had it for the fireworks, welcome to the fireworks. Uh, it's so that you know we see you and you see us seeing you. And we want to use that as a tool of deterrence, but also if something does happen or if you're a victim of a crime, we'll be able to use that wall to identify the perpetrator uh, who accosted you. What are, what are citizens asking you most this week? And I know you were out walking on Wednesday night through neighborhoods. What are they saying to you right now? What do they want to see? You know, our citizens, they demand safety, and they should. And, and they understand uh, that these incidents of the past weekend doesn't represent our city. This is not who we are. Uh, we're better than this. And, and it's time that we all take our own part of the responsibility of the image of the city in reducing crime and violence. You know, 95, 98% of the people that went downtown had a wonderful time. But we're not here to talk about them. Right. You know, we're here to talk about those few that came down uh, and, and, and violated the law and hurt people. Uh, and I'm so proud of our police department because every single trigger puller in our city downtown uh, was arrested this weekend. Uh, I would love to say that it didn't happen, but I'm happy to say that the arrests were made when it did happen. All right, so we're going to be seeing some of these different resources and deployments we can expect to see over the summer. We're going to keep checking in with you. Please do. And we appreciate the time here. Right. Chief James White from the city of Detroit. Thank you.